I've got me a new baby and it weighs 57.3 pounds. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing this Golden Mate 12 volt, 200 amp hour LifePo 4 battery. And currently there's a sale on this battery over on Amazon where you can get $50 off, putting the total at $519. That's a really good deal on a battery of this size. But before you rush over and buy one, be sure to watch this entire video to find out if this battery is right for you or not. And then if you do believe it's the right battery for you, be sure to use the link in the description below to get that $50 off. Now there are a million different ways that you can use this battery. Maybe you're an RVer and you need it for that reason. Maybe you go camping a lot, this can run your entire campsite. Uh, maybe you're on a job site and you wanna power some tools when your batteries go out. Uh, there's just so many different things you can do with it. I wanna use it to actually power appliances. And I think this is gonna be a good solution for me on that. Uh, I wanna get this hooked up to an inverter and we're gonna run some tests on it. We're gonna drain the battery, we're gonna charge the battery, we're gonna see what it can run. And I'm gonna hook it to a 3,500 watt um, inverter and see what it can actually do. And the first question that I had about this battery was how many batteries could I put together to build a battery bank for home backup? And the answer to that question is you could put 16 of these together. And the way you would do that is to put four of them in series and then parallel those series together for a total of 16 batteries, giving you a total of 40.96 kilowatt hours. And what's so compelling about that is you get 16 batteries at $500 a piece. You're building a 40.96 kilowatt battery bank for $8,000. Um, I don't know if I could do that anywhere else. I don't have any intentions to install this in a battery bank of that size to power my house. But what I wanna do with this is to power a mini split. I'm gonna have a solar powered mini split, a series where I'm gonna be installing that. And I'm gonna show you guys step through step how to install one of those from installing the breaker all the way to turning it on. But I'm gonna use this to power that system in the nighttime. During the day, it can run off solar panels, and at nighttime, hopefully I have enough storage in this battery to power those mini splits. And let's talk about the life cycles of this battery real fast. They claim that it has 15,000 cycles, and the way that that's broken down is you'll still be at 100% capacity after 2,000 cycles. And then at 4,000 cycles, you'll have 80% capacity. Then you'll be down to 50% capacity by the time you reach 7,000 cycles and the life of the battery will continue to live on until you get to 15,000 cycles. Now I was just on their website and these are the numbers that they're advertising for life cycles. I'm not sure if I can buy into it because that's stating that there's 15,000 cycles and you'll still have 60% battery life. Uh, that means for 41 years, if you deplete that battery every day for 365 days a year, for 41 years, you'll still have 60% left on the battery. That's a test that I can't do, but I am a little cautious on that number. And just like many other batteries of this style, this is protected with a battery management system or what they call a BMS, and it protects you from short circuits, overcurrent, over voltage and overheating. Now this does have a cold temperature sensor that protects it from when you're trying to charge it in a cold setting. So I'm not gonna tear this apart and show you that sensor, but there are other videos out there that uh, do a really good job of demonstrating that. And I'm actually gonna be leaving a link in the description below to a gentleman that tore this exact battery apart and explained exactly what's happening on the internals of this battery. I think he just did a fantastic job of doing that. So there's really no reason for me to do that. I just want to refer you over to his channel, maybe check him out. He might be a good resource for you going forward, especially in batteries and that type of technology. So he doesn't know I'm sending you over to him, but be sure to go check him out. And if you find it to be valuable, be sure to subscribe to his channel. And what I've got going on here is I got my shunt and that's how I'm gonna monitor what's going on between the inverter and the battery. It's gonna kind of give me the readouts of that and a 3,500 watt pure sine wave inverter. I'll get more on that in another video. I'm actually gonna do a review on this inverter uh, probably in my next video. So if you wanna see that, I might consider subscribing to the channel. So when I put that video out, you get notified. Uh, also, I have the charger 
and this is just a monitor that goes with this uh, inverter. So I'm gonna get all this hooked up, but before I do that, I wanna touch on this little resistor I have right here. This is a 25 watt, 30 ohm, and that's gonna keep me from having a spark when I hook this inverter up to this battery. If you don't do this, you'll get a spark, can be dangerous. Um, let's get it hooked up and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So before I take this and put it onto that battery, I wanna take my little gator clamps, connect it to this and to this, then we'll connect this one. You could take an assembly, just touch it against it as well, that would work, but I'm doing this just for safety reasons. So when you tap that against that, you're charging your inverter. Now they're pre-charged and you won't get any spark. See, no spark. So that's what that's really good for. And then I take the red and I connect it to the power line of my shunt to power it on. There we go. Now let's fire this baby up and monitor what's happening and get a closer look on the backside here. And before we get started on draining the battery, I wanna to touch base on this really fast because it's important on the appliances that I'm gonna be using here. The max that I could use on each one of these outlets is 15 amps. If I wanna go over that, I'd have to hook this up, which could do a maximum of 25 amps. To give you a quick breakdown of the display on the inverter, we have 13.5 volts coming from the battery and we have an output of 120 volts coming to each one of these plugs here and we have a full battery. Let's take a look at where we're starting at. Because this is turned on, we're pulling 4.37 watts and we have a remaining amp hours of 199.98 hours. We have a total of 2560 watt hours and a total of 200 amp hours. And what I'm trying to accomplish on this test is just to test out the capacity to see if the label is actually correct or not. And the first appliance that we're gonna be plugging in is this shop fan. So we get that plugged in. And then the second appliance that we're gonna be plugging in is a heat gun. And now that I have over 2000 watts running continuously, I need to find some more appliances get that thing to drain as fast as possible. I wonder if I can hook a welder to it. <laughs> I'm just playing. You can't hook a welder to this inverter, but I definitely could use this little shop vac, and I think it will pull around 500 watts. I used this in another demonstration, a video that I did back in the winter on an EcoFlow power station, and it worked out really well. So I'm gonna add this one to the inverter. Now things are about to get really loud in here. We're at 2,086 before we start. Right around 25, 24. So I need to leave all of these appliances on for 51 minutes to delete that battery. Uh, that's a lot of power. So this is what happened. I actually have been running this for about 10 minutes everything has shut down and one thing that i noticed is this is pretty warm right here and now after a couple minutes this turned back on all right this is obviously not designed to run that heat gun for that long of a time um, i've got it running for another five minutes i was trying to do some thermal uh, scans on this and it shut down, it just shut down again. The maximum discharge is 120 amps on this battery. So if you do 120 amps times 12 volts, it gives you somewhere around 1440 watts. And when you turn this on, that's 1500 watts right there. You have this 500 watts, and the fan on over here, it's around 340 watts, 350 watts, and everything's adding up to around 2500 watts. But the BMS was, is protecting it from uh, burning itself up. So we know that the BMS is working correctly under a load as well. We're down to 9.9 .9 volts. 
This is actually running very low now, even on medium. There, everything shut off. So we ended up with 214.18 amp hours. So that passed the capacity test with flying colors. It actually provided more capacity than what it was rated for. So can't go wrong there. So the next thing that I wanna do is do a efficiency test on charging. So I'm gonna charge this from where it's setting now, completely depleted all the way to 100% and find out how many watts we're putting into the battery versus how many watts we got out of the battery. To be able to do that, I'm gonna put my positive on positive terminal on the battery and the negative on the load side of my shunt so that way I can record the data. To do this calculation, we need to know the amp hours right here, 214.18 at 12 volts. And that's gonna give us right around 2570. So that's what we used when we consumed. Now uh, we are charging and we wanna see something close to that number right here. It should be 2.570. So if we get something really close to that, that would give us a really good efficiency rating on that battery. And we have finally completed our charge. And the total number is 2.88 kilowatt hours. All right, to figure this up, I was gonna use 12 volts, but you can't. I gotta use a 12.8. So I'm gonna use 12.8 volts times 214.18 amp hours. And that gives me 2741 watts. Now on our charge, you've seen that it was 2.88 kilowatt hours, right? So let's take that to watts and just do 2880, giving us an efficiency of 95.17%. So that concludes the efficiency test. That's what I come up with. And overall, I'm really happy with the performance out of this battery. And at $519 after using those coupons to get it down to 519, I think this is probably the most budget friendly battery that you could purchase right now. Would I recommend it? That really just depends on your situation. What are you going to be trying to power? If you're trying to power a large load, then yeah, I would recommend it, but you're probably going to have to buy two, maybe three or four of them, just depending on what you're trying to load. But if you're looking at 1400 watts or less, uh, this handled that very well. We actually pushed it up to 2500 watts uh, during our test and it finally did kick off, but at 1400 watts, we never had one problem. Everything just worked like it was supposed to. Three things I can say about the battery is that it it works, it is budget friendly, and yes, I would recommend it. So if you found something helpful about this video, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. I know I say that a lot, but it does help me out with the algorithm. And I also like hearing from you guys and communicating with you. I respond to every comment that is put on any video of mine. So if you want to interact with me, leave me a comment and I'll get back with you as fast as I possibly can. I hope to catch you in my next video.